Joe, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk, and today we've got Slabsky from Clan IGC and his ST1, a Tier 9 Russian heavy tank. And he's going to do some Russian heavy tank stuff. I appreciate you sending this in. Slabsky has a nice little game here. A couple things to talk about here, and I wanted to feature this one because I haven't shown any gameplay down on the Banana Road for a long time. I almost never go here. Even if I was playing this tank, I might go up the hill. I just find that to be... A better position overall however it has to be said having someone down here not letting them push straight through and splitting your team can uh, can be a good thing as well and the st1 is a great tank for doing it now what i want to talk a little bit here slapsky is and we'll, we'll look at it multiple times i think you're over angling your to some extent over angling your side scrape so we'll talk about it a couple times as we go and i will say on this one i actually like coming forward uh what I'm talking about is instead of angling back, let's see which way, which way would it be? It would be coming out like that, I think, if I've got it forward or back. I don't know. But uh, I think if you side scrape here, you're kind of exposing the side of your tank. And I think you can tuck up behind this rubble pile and not expose your bottom hole. Think of, just just have a thought on that. I don't know. I don't use this position as much anymore, and I know they've changed it over time. I do have a vi couple videos on this one, though. Be very careful right here, because I have seen people do what you're doing, tuck up against here, and maybe just enough of their their turret is pointing or is sticking out. But it looks like you got it sorted. I don't see any line of sight on your turret there, but be very careful with that one. There's not much of a... <laughs> there's not much of a... Uh, so they did hit you right there. There's not much of a hatch on that tank. I think they maybe shot through that little V right there. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a couple little spots uh, that are kind of unintentionally open right there, or maybe intentionally, depending on how you want to look at it. So he's facing a 705A, which is an extremely heavily armored and angled Russian tank. He's got a 1184 and a 4005. So a lot of problematic things here. First of all, difficult to damage a hold down 705. Second, all the peeking and poking and side scraping, especially if you come out and put your rear end out, is just asking for a 4005. If he's shooting HE, he doesn't give a crap really about your side scraping. He just needs a piece of your tank to hit. And the 124 has a bunch of pen and may be able to just to go through. Definitely facing a difficult proposition right here. So it looks like he sort of bails out of it. And now he's got his own 705 Alpha that's moved up. And whatever help we have. This is it. So it's just these two. And this is kind of what you want to do on the banana road if you're outnumbered. You just want to hold these guys while the rest of the team gets her done. But let's take a look at the map real quick because this is my concern when I go to this position. I note that we have a bunch of guys in the back corner. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of us are over here playing peekaboo games with the leopard, maybe shooting up to the hill or something, or being shot from the hill. We didn't send a whole bunch up the hill. So depending on what the enemy team does, we might be in trouble on the hill. We could potentially be trouble in trouble in the banana road, depending how many more are there. Although you do have the option of the guys over here to the west flexing over. Of course, there's an open spot. And if there's shots down from above, they can hit you as you try to move. So this whole setup is got me a little bit nervous right here. So the 705 is looking to take shots. Here comes Slabsky pulling out here. See if he can put a nice shot on the 124. But the guy backs up just as he shoots. 705A is doing some work. He's getting some bounces. That might have been the 4005 that actually just shot him. So unknown what he shot at him. So I just think that you really overangled there. And then when you pull forward and turn like that, you're giving even more side armor to him. And we get away with it just to some extent. I do like how you're working with the 705A though. Let him do that. See if you can't get him to bait the shots. And then when they shoot at him, now you have a free option to come out. So very nicely done right here. Oops, let's show you what he's doing. And... This is really important, guys, right here, where they take a shot and you see them back out. You can pull out and zoom in and aim in. That gives you an aimed shot. Of course, he bailed out of it and decided not to hold on to it. 
Again, there's a little bit of the over-angling right there. Just be very careful with it. I'll mention it every time because I just really think you're, you're over-angling to some extent. Nice shot right there. That's the example I was just talking about where he was aimed in. Look at the I-7. So he goes in front of the 705A. That's not gross, especially if the 705A isn't interested in push, pulling all the way up to the rocks right there. But they can get tangled up, and the I-7 is giving side armor every time he pokes out right there. But it is one way to add another tank to that. Now see what the IS-7's done? He's ganked to the spot. But they decide to push. Which I think is not a bad idea. If you look out over at the west side, they're doing okay. Their 705 is pushed up. So now we have an IS-7, a 705A against a 705A. Sorry, we have an IS-7, a 705A, and an ST-1 against a single 705A. Slapsky kind of comes around here, looking around, oh, the 4005, his 705A gets thumped, more shots coming in, and we're stuck. This is not what you want, guys, when you push into positions like this. You don't want to let one tank stop you, and then allow these guys in the back to get these free shots as you're attempting to take on this guy. So think outside the container a little bit right here. It's a little bit dangerous going into the middle, but it's not too bad because you do have the 1183 and the T95 sitting over here kind of watching this open area. I would have started thinking about trying to get around behind the 705A and make him make choices. You also notice that the M451 is coming at you with a stock turret. So he doesn't seem to have, I don't believe, the big gun. So he's not as scary as he might otherwise be. Comes out and takes a shot, and we're kind of rocking back and forth. 4,005 takes a hit. He takes a shot and backs out. And this is when I look at this and go, you know what? Let, why don't we just go past the 705A and just tuck into this little spot right here? That'll protect us to some extent from shots in the back from these guys over here. I don't want to go here where these dudes can just pop out and shoot me in the back. I want to tuck up in here and start shooting this guy and force him either to turn to me and take me on, therefore giving the IS-7 and the 705 shots, or allow me just to plink at him from behind. The other option there, Slavsky, is to back out of this and come around this way. And what I want to do is I want to break down this fight. I think you had, a, you had an option at a side turret shot there, potentially. You want to break down this fight as fast as possible, because right now y'all are bleeding hit points. So you're going to come out here and look for that easy shot on this guy. This works out nicely. We thump him once. So he's got that stock turret with that big tumor on it right there. Kind of a similar turret, if not the same one that the AMX has. See that big old tumor up there. He takes another one, so we've eaten eaten 800 odd hit points from him. But just notice how long this takes. Also, let's pay attention to the rest of the game. Because all of the sudden, while I've been talking here in the last like minute, the enemy team has basically collapsed. Most of the power is here, or what's left up on the hill. You've got half the team dead, one of them's a TD, and your whole left flank is now free. Which means you can come around this inside here, drive right around here and come in behind the 705. What you do have to watch out for is if one of these guys is smart and they come around here and start shooting you through this little opening right here. But if they do, and pretty quickly, you're going to have pressure on them from over here on their side. So it's very dynamic in this case. You start moving your chess piece, they've got to start moving theirs. As a matter of fact, if they do turn around and try to take you on, it breaks it down over here and allows the I-7 and 705 to push this 705A right here. Unfortunately, 4005 just nuked one of your tanks. And this is why sitting here with these kinds of fights is problematic and allowing them to keep on chipping away at your tanks right there. Just FYI, this little side spot right here is fairly weak if he gets too much angle on it right there. Obviously, that's going to be really problematic. If you can sneak a shot in there, maybe, but it's also highly angled. That's probably about your best bet on his little, I don't know what you would call it, a cheek or whatever on the front front quarter panel. Now, that just feels really over-angled to me right there, man. I think you could have put a lot less angle on that. There we go. Nicely done, but you do eat the 735. Notice he's shooting heat. This is going to be to his detriment in a moment. You're down to a one shot, and once again, just that's a lot of extra angle right there. 
we've beaten that dead horse. It looks like you're maybe looking for a weak spot on the top of that tank. Again, I think that side quarter panel, front quarter panel might have been the best shot right there. That thing has extremely small hatches on the top and it's really hard to get a shot on those things. Two bounces, holy cow, very nice. We're up to 1,050. Trying to kill this bloody 705 Alpha. There's another problem here that I've run into myself. You get a little confused on who's who in the zoo. You scooch up here, you took a shot, didn't work, getting your reload. Here comes their 7058. Basically, he's decided the game's more or less over, and if he's going to have any kind of chance to do anything, he's got to get rid of you guys. And he's probably coming after you, right? He's not really pushing into the IS-7 so he can face hug an IS-7 and bounce off his front off his front hole. He wants to kill you. You're the one shot. So if he can get around this IS-7 and kill you, and you've been hiding behind this guy the whole time, then that's uh, all good for him. So he comes around the corner. He's looking at you, and... Man, I don't know what... Looks like he got into your tr track. Yep, so he broke your track. That's the problem with heat. That 650 alpha shot that should have taken you out is eaten by the track, and you are good to go. You survive to live another day. I thought maybe you should push into the side of the 705, but looks like now the 4005 wants a piece of that action. And this is what I was talking about where I get goobered up too. It looks like maybe just for a minute you thought the IS-7 was the guy you wanted to shoot. There you go. And you get down into his lower plate right there. 4005 is backing out. I talk about this last part I'm going to talk about a lot in this game. I would just charge the 4005. You want to go get some hit points. Who cares if he kills you? Go get another 400 damage and get yourself up to 31 or whatever. What, 35, 36? Math is hard. Don't let him just sit there. Just go get your hit points. I don't think I think he does push out. Well, there you go. So I'm wrong. <laughs> I would have pushed in, but you got your shot. Good deal. And down he goes. And that's pretty much it. Three thousand seven hundred three damage, seven hundred and sixty six assists. Talked about a lot of stuff right here. This is a fairly classic banana road battle against a lot of tanks with a lot of armor minus the four thousand five. What he's trying to do is be opportunistic over here. After all the big armored guys shoot each other, he wants to come around and chuck his HE downrange and shred off a significant portion of your hit points with that great big old gun. Or if he gets lucky with a nice aim shot or just plain old lucky, hit a weak spot and drop a thousand on. I think he did that actually to the lower plate of your 705 or maybe the side of it earlier right there. So pretty classic battle. You saw that the rest of your team did well and ended up winning both their flanks. Both the West and the East were won by your team, which worked out for you right there. I think you had some opportunities maybe to go around and break open the 705 earlier. What I will say about that, the, the other hand, right, on the other foot, is the fact that you were still alive with hit points at the end. And by not dying, by not making an aggressive move where you might have actually been taken out if they were smart enough to get in the window and kill you before you got around there, potentially losing the banana road and maybe then that that cascades into other badness for your team so being a little bit um cautious and still alive at the end of the game is probably better than dying earlier in the game being super aggressive and potentially giving the enemy team a way back into the fight didn't see, really seem to be a problem there and i think I talked about it a couple times where he could have made that move, especially when I stopped and I said, look, half their team's gone. That's when I would have made that move. Go around there and try to start working on that 705. But that's just me. Well done. Otherwise, thanks for sending in that replay, Slapsky. Guys, that's all I've got for today. Have a good one, and we will see you.